Live mixes, live radio programs, and live entertaining and news package programs right here from GTR, Ghana Talks Radio. This is Ghana Talks Radio, the best station rocking in Asia. GTR News. GTR News. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news right here on GTR. GTR. Good afternoon. This is the Afternoon News on Ghana Talks Radio with me, Sandra Asante. Top stories about 2,000 homes affected in Ada by the tidal waves. Government not showing enough commitment towards tidal waves victims, Jafar Gomashi lament. Also, Uber, Boat and Yango drivers strike nationwide today. These are more stories after the break. Get it big. Get it here. Listen to all your live mixes, live radio programs, and live entertaining and news package programs right here from GTR. Ghana Talks Radio. Duty our news. The news others choose. You're most welcome back from the break to very first story. The Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Oseche Mensa Bonsu, has stated emphatically that the Yasin North Parliamentary seat held by the embattled NTC member of Parliament, James Kwachi Kwesen, is vacant. He said the total number of members of the Parliament is now 274 and not 275. According to him, even the minority side agrees with this position. Citing Article 97 of the 1992 Constitution, the majority leader insisted that there is an automaticity that renders the seat vacant, which is, if any circumstances arise such that if he was not a member of parliament, would cause him to be disqualified or ineligible for election under Article 94 under this Constitution. Duty Duty the Shana legislature disagree that it requires the court to declare the seat vacant. For him, the embattled Asin North seat became automatically vacant the moment Mr. Quaison failed to prove to the judiciary that he qualified to run as a parliamentary candidate in the 2020 election. Meanwhile, he insisted that in the fullness of time, the law would take its course. So your point is that James Dutchie Quaison, as it stands now, is not on you. That's my understanding of the law. That is why they themselves are saying that their number now is 136. And if it's 136, if it's out, you use the word if. Um, and I know that he is. The number now climbs down from 275 to 274, which means half is 137. Duty our news. The news others choose. Nearly 2,000 people in the Kulamanya and Anyaman have been affected by the tidal waves and more than 400 of them forced from their homes. Coastal communities in the Ada West District have in the past years been experiencing flooding caused by the tidal waves. Residents, however, said the communities have this week recorded the heaviest wave ever. They blame the situation on lack of sea defense, which was not extended to cover their coast line. The MP for the Ada West, Honorable Christian Atuteye, called on the Minister for Works and Housing and the President to come to the aid of the affected victims. Duty on you. The sea defense work to bring a lasting solution to the problem. Really, really sorry to say that almost 2,000 people from Anyamam and Akprabanya put together are really, really uh, displaced by the tidal waves. And this is something which has just occurred a few months back. I think in November precisely, we had this experience. I call on the Minister for Works and Housing to intervene immediately, but then until now, nothing. As we speak, last night I had to come here and monitor the situation. It was really bad last night. This morning, we thank God, is a bit okay, but not to say that the people are free. People have nowhere to lay their heads. And I'm still calling upon the government, precisely President Nana Ado, to continue the sea defense which has been started from Adan East, whereby if he continues it, by now it will be done. But they, I don't know why they decided to jump over Adan West Coast Line and move to Nigo Pampram. What is wrong with the people of Adan West and then the Duty President? The news others choose.
also on the tidal wave story, the assembly members of the Akpilatmanya and the Anyamam expressed the most houses has been submerged by the tidal waves and therefore call on government and stakeholders to come to their aid. Tidal waves are very hard and ever since a lot of houses have been submerged by the tidal wave. As a result of this, a lot of people are displaced now. They don't have any place to lay their head. And so we are calling on government and all stakeholders to come to our aid. Uh, the last one was on 6 November 2021, and this is the second one. It has been happening persistently, but of late it's been too frequent. As a result, a lot of houses have been destroyed now. So we are only appealing to government to see the need and come to our aid and come and help. We see the, the only news. thing we need. The news others choose. The Member of Parliament for the Ketu South constituency, Jifa Abla Gomashi, has taken on the government for doing too little for residents affected by the tidal waves in the Volta region. She says government lacks the commitment to providing the necessary emergency response months after the destruction. About 20 households have been left stranded at the Agavezi and some adjoining communities in the Ketu South municipality after the tidal waves hit their homes over the weekend. This comes several months after hundreds were left stranded in some coastal communities in the Volta region in 2021. The lives of residents of the Amotinu, Salakope, Agavezi, Blekusu and Adina are under threat following tidal wave destruction since March 2021. Several efforts by residents to get the government to complete the seed defense project has proven futile. Several are uh, also having distractions and several demonstrations as well. But Jifa Abla Komeshi believes government's effort so far has been appalling. The minister, according to Gamashi, said the project was to begin by August 2021. Meanwhile, the work is yet to begin. This affected residents, however, are still calling on the GDL government news. To, GDL news. to the people and complete the sea defense project as their lives are still in danger. The latest tidal waves also affected some communities in greater Accra and central region. Let's listen to Jifar Gamashi. Well, so... Um as we speak, I have a question already filed, uh, which will be which has been our new our new on paper uh, for tomorrow. But uh, if you if you recall, uh, and I, I know that you just mentioned that uh, I didn't ask questions on the floor of Parliament, um, and uh, part of the answer that was given by the Minister for Work and House and Honourable Asen Subwachi was that we were to uh, witness the continuation of the second phase of the at the end of phase one. And as we speak, there's no contractor on site. I also do recall that I, I requested that a temporary shelter be constructed for the people so that uh, if it happened again, they will have somewhere they could go and find research uh, so that Duty our new duty so our news. Who, um bring some things for Move. They should move. Move where? 
This is where they have known their whole life. This is all they have done. Fishing is all they do. The alternative for them was to cross the border and go and uh, sell some vegetables or buy some and come and sell in Ghana. And that too has not happened in two years. It's as if I'm singing to myself or I'm talking to myself all the time. It's as if the state has refused to hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You can't say move without providing the necessary... Uh, 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 Duty uh, our news. The, the news others choose. Focusing on business now, President Nanado Danko Kufojo has said he does not know any economy around the world is doing well in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and also the geopolitical tension between Russia and Ukraine. He said economies around the world are all struggling owing to these two main factors. Speaking in an interview with BBC's Peter Okoche on Monday 14th, uh, 4th of April, he said that they have also the opportunity to have industry set up not for just Ghana, but also for Ecowas markets and also for the African market. No, it's doing, uh, I mean, let's just be honest, it's doing terribly. Uh, oh, not terribly. Well, um, it's doing, it's, when, uh, when you, uh, your, your in, inflation in your country, inflation in Ghana. I don't know the economy in the world that's doing well. well Tell me Ghana, where you are Ghana, here. Inflation in Ghana. <laughs> the highest well, inflation. Well, 15.7%. Uh, the, the, the Ghanaian said he has fallen 20% on the dollar. The worst, the worst after Russia, which, is, which has a lot of sanctions began, against it. It's began, it's began to, to firm up. It has began to firm up. And we're, we're, we're seeing the, the CD systematically appreciating against the dollar. People still can't employ, you know, I was just reading today, you know, um, people in the hospitality industry that you're pushing so hard, you know, having to lay their staff off. We've got taxi driver unions threatening strikes because of spiraling fuel costs. I mean, it, it doesn't look like a place that I want to go and put my money. Where will you put your money? Still on business, or the leadership of the Online Drivers Association of Ghana has declared a sit-down strike over the welfare concerns. The two-day national sit-down strike was started on Tuesday, 5th of April, and ended on the 6th of April, Wednesday. It is meant to drum home their demands for better conditions of service. The association is advising its members to stay home as the leadership seeks audience with the management of the online driving platforms over their grievances. The vice president of the Ghana Online Drivers Union James Nilo Gamo in an interview on Monday 4th of April 2022 said that they are concerned about the drivers and the recent frequent fuel prices increase and also he noted that the first online driver's charge has been despite the upward adjustment of all other variables. This very strike is um, a combine of all unions both in Greater Accra Eastern region, Western region, and Central region. And um, we are embarking on this strike because of all our engagement with this opponent to get fair increase became in vain. And then we have no alternative than to embark on Duty this our news. strike. Duty our news. Seen, we've went to boats, especially for them to increase the fare. We are all aware the fuel increments in the country, which is over 150 percent. But our up opponents refuse to increase the fare just to entice the riders. Mm. But you know, there's a saying that a hungry man is an angry man. We are also looking at the side where the drivers have to render a good service to the riders. You see, the happiest the riders, the next time they can ride with us. So we are also trying, doing all these things to um, render good service to our opponents and uh, riders. I wish, it's never a wish to make our riders stranded, but we have no alternative than to embark on this strike. So we are just pleading with all our customers to um, to, play, uh, to uh, side with us. Let's play. So 14,000 of them. We're embarking on the strike tomorrow. We are not working tomorrow and the next day. But, but if you don't work, that will mean that your, your targets will be affected individually as well. Yeah. I know you work on the news. The news others choose.
Ministry on Business, former Minister of Power, Dr. Kwamna Donko, says Ghana risk returning to the dreaded days of erratic power outages known as Doomso in the next two years if government fails to address the issue of power generation capacity. He contends that despite the fast-growing rate of power demand and consumption, there has not been a commissary increase in supply capacity, putting the country at a risk of a crisis. Addressing the media, the Pru East legislature urged the government to immediately take steps towards bringing on stream additional power supply unit to boost the country's total capacity and adequately meet the increase in demand for power. Nation's attention, I will not have been doing my diligent duty to the good people of Ghana. This country is likely, most likely to face load shedding in the next two years. If urgent steps are not taken from this moment to increase our power generation, I say this on the basis of facts. For example, on the 15th of February 2022, our peak power demand was 3,343 megawatts. On the 15th of February, just about a month and a half ago, that was the highest peak demand for power. On that day, our available power was 3,527 megawatts. We had a surplus of only 180 megawatts. Only 180 megawatts. So we were dangerously close to matching peak demand with total available supply. Due to our news, the news others choose. However, the Deputy Minister for Energy, Andrew Adapar Mercer, has refuted Dr. John Cost Doomso claims.
If you just join us, this is the afternoon news in Ghana Talks Radio on the International Front. An Indonesian court handed down a death sentence on Monday to a teacher for raping a 13 year old girl at an Islamic school, upholding an appeal by prosecutors for the death penalty after he had initially received a sentence of life in prison. The case of teacher Harry Barriwan has shocked Indonesia and shone a spotlight on the need to protect children from sexual violence in the country's religious boarding schools. After he was sentenced to life in jail by a court in the city of Bundong in February, prosecutors who had called for the death penalty filed an appeal. Ira Mambo, Henry's lawyer, declined to comment on whether there would be an appeal citing the need to see the full ruling from the court. The spokesperson of the local prosecutor's office also said it will wait to receive the final ruling before commenting. Between 2016 and 2021, Harry sexually groomed a 13 year old. 13 girls who were between 12 and 16 years old and impregnated eight of these victims, a judge said in February. Indonesian officials, including the country's child protection minister, had also backed calls for the death penalty, though the nation's Human Rights Commission, which proposes the death penalty, said it was not appropriate. Ria in Tunisia and Tunisian MPs faces the charges that may carry the death sentence for attending an online session of the suspended parliament last week, legal and political figures have said. The session was condemned by the Tunisian president as a failed coup attempt. The legislators stand accused of um, having an attempt to change the political system and to cause a disorder. That is said by the MP of Sadulu, who attended a session as quoted by the French language reality website on Monday. The former dean of Tunisian lawyers, Abzarik Al Kaleni, has announced the creation of the National Committee to defend the MPs and praise republic awareness of the serious charges they face. South Africa has announced the ending of COVID restrictions two years after they were imposed. In a televised address, President Cyril Ramaphosa said the national state of disaster will end at midnight on Monday. Max goods will still be required indoors for another month. He said although the pandemic was not over, he was confident that there was only better times ahead. Mr. Ramaphosa said it was important to boost the economy and create jobs. South Africa has recorded far more coronavirus cases than any African country, accounting for almost a third of infection across the continent. It has officially registered 100,000 deaths. Still on COVID-related stories, and Chinese authorities have extended the lockdown in Shanghai to cover all at 25 million people after a fresh surge in COVID cases. Until now, there had been separate measures for the eastern and western sides, but the whole city is now subject to indefinite restrictions. Shanghai is the largest single city to be locked down to date. The important financial hub has battled a new wave of coronavirus infection for more than a month. The Authorities reacted after new cases rose to more than 13,000 a day, although the numbers are not high by some international standards. Long queues have been witnessed at patrol station in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital, Kinshasa, as the city struggles with fuel shortages. Fuel prices have not changed, but only limited amounts are being sold per day. The shortage started uh, to bite on Monday, although the authorities insist there is a sufficient supply. The government has tried to reassure people by saying the situation is being addressed. Oil marketers in the country have demanded that fuel prices go up to match international prices. Still on international stories, two members of a British family have died and two others are critically injured after a landslide in Australia. The man, 49, and his nine-year-old son were killed by falling rock in the Blue Mountains near Sydney on Monday. A woman, 50, and her son, 14, were taken to the hospital with serious head and abdominal injuries. Her daughter, 15, was treated for shock. Authorities said the family were on holiday in the popular tourist area where the accident happened. 
Unfortunately, there is a landslide while they have been bushwalking. It's quite a tragic scene, said Superintendent George Nelson from the South Wales Police. The woman and teenage boy had required sedation and intubation before being wedged into the safety and flown to hospital. The teenager girl was also taken to the hospital and was extremely distressed, according to authorities. To some entertainment story, Britney Spears has confirmed that she is in the process of writing a book. We are confirming a recent report in U.S. media that the star intended to open a new teller or memoir. Spears shared the news in the message posted on Instagram Monday night. The singer said, "The moment was a painful event in her life, and that she has never been able to express openly." In November, a judge ended a legal guardianship that controlled many aspects of her life for over a decade. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Afternoon News on Ghana Talks Radio. This is where I draw the curtain. You can log on to our website www.ghanatalksradio.com for more news updates. My name is Sandra Asante. Stay tuned for the Sported Bit. Enjoy your afternoon. Get it big. Get it here. Listen to all your life mixes, live radio programs, and live entertaining and news package programs right here from GTR. Ghana Talks Radio.